Recently, I got a job to create uh, the wraparound segments to an anthology, which was super duper fun. I freaking loved it. But I wanted to talk about how I got this look for the film. Essentially, I did it all in Premiere Pro CC, so this, you don't need any third-party plugins, you don't need After Effects, you don't need Mocha, you don't need Motion. All this can be applied within your editing software. So without further ado, so what you wanna do is open up your editing software of choice, mine being Premiere Pro CC. Now, what you wanna do is go into File, New Sequence, create yourself a new sequence. If you haven't created yourself a new project, open up a new project file and work away from there. So I'm gonna label the sequence Video Tape 6. Press OK. And now that we've opened up our new sequence, we're gonna drop in our footage. Mine being this little shot off my cell phone. So if we look here, this is this is the clip here. I'm gonna make my in point here. I'm gonna be looking all ominous. And this is gonna be my out point here. Now I'm gonna drop it in. Uh, change sequence settings. The biggest thing that I can recommend is the lower the quality of video, the better in a sense. Like I shot this on my iPhone because I knew that was going to get me closer to my end result of what I was gonna go for. Now I'm going for a dark ominous tone. You can totally use this effect for lots of different ways. It does not have to be uh, the ring style. The first thing that we're gonna play around with is our position and scale. So we're gonna go into effects controls and scale it up to 110, boom. Now we don't have to make our scales any keyframes. So let's unselect that and we're just gonna have it 110. So the first thing that we're gonna do is our position and it's gonna be our up and down position. So we're going to start keyframing it. So let's click the little stopwatch. And the first thing that we wanna do is leave it at 360, move forward two frames and now change it to 365. Boom, and now let's move over three frames and now change it to 362. I go into our timeline, one, two, two frames, and now go up to 360 again. And then one more time, one, two, and change it to 365. Now this is gonna be giving us the jitter effect. Now if we copy this, so select your keyframe points and press Command C, that's gonna copy that. And now we're gonna move up a couple frames, paste it, and boom, it is applied. So essentially, now if we watch back on our footage, it's going to have like an up and down jitter kind of look. So the first thing that we wanna do is apply a grain to it. So we wanna create an overall look for our footage before moving forward. So I'm gonna go into grain, grain and we can grab onto noise and drag and drop that out of our effects panel scroll down and let's just add a noise to it now we're going to go in and add a unsharpen mask to it so let's grab it i just type in unsharpen it's in my blur and sharpen bin now a lot of editing softwares have this it's not just premiere pro and already it gives it a weird look now i'm going to raise my radius to about five so let's do that and it just gives it like this weird sharpening glow around things that I think just makes it look a little more weird and ominous. So now that we've made all of our adjustments to our overall clip here, now it's time to start tweaking and doing some cuts. So let's make a B as an incision. And what you wanna do is just find some interesting points for incision points. So this, I went in for the first like almost second of my shot and I made an incision there. Let's play it. And let's make another incision here. Again, just find some random points. And for me, it's always just how I feel. I go, oh, okay, I'll make a cut here. And this is where we're gonna be adding in our warpy effects. So, so let's go into effects panel, type in warp. It'll come up in our distort. You don't wanna click warp stabilizer. You wanna click wave warp. Now let's drag and drop it into our footage. So go into wave height. And what we want to do is make the height just a little bit higher. Let's make the width a little bit wider. And now what we want to do is go into our direction. We want to change the direction of the warp so it looks more VHS-y and less effecty. Now that I like the look of. And if we play the clip out, that's what we got. Now the thing is when you do have this in VHS clips, majority of the time it doesn't happen to the whole clip. It happens to certain selected areas. So what we wanna do is grab our masking tool and our wave warp here, and we're gonna create a bit of a mask. So I wanna make it a little bit more in the center of the clip. So let's create like this weird zigzaggy pattern. We're gonna click this, 
grab this, and just create like this weird mask in the middle. Now the, the wave warp doesn't look as prominent in this zone, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make the height a lot larger. And again, you just want it to just look off. See how we're getting all this warpage here in the middle? And if we play the clip out, that's what we get. Now it's starting to look pretty neat, and what we're gonna do now, because I really like the look of that, is I'm gonna click on to my wave warp filter. I'm gonna find all of these shots here. I'm gonna click and highlight all of them, and I'm gonna press paste. And that's gonna apply that into different areas of the footage. And to make it look a little bit more different and a little bit more unique, all you've gotta do is now go into your footage for each of those selected shots and play around with the mask a little bit and play around with your wave. So let's make the wave at 86 here. Let's take it down here and click it at maybe take our wave height down, make it just like 14, a little more subtle, and then let's make this one the same for the height, but let's make the width a lot longer. There we go. So now we've got a similar wave, but it has uh, a different structure each time when we play it out. So now we're gonna go back and it's time to start playing around with our other filter, which is crop. Now I think crop actually has a more uh, prominent effect than the wave and this part I actually like a lot more so what we want to do is double up on some of our shots so let's make another incision point here play it and now we're going to double up our clip so we have one shot on top of the other on the top shot what you want to do is grab onto crop and drag it over top now this is where we're going to now go into scale we're going to scale the footage up to about 115 Okay, maybe actually even a little bit more. Let's do it to 120. Let's make it look a little crazier. And now we're gonna go into our crop filter. And if we click onto this, that makes me select onto my crop. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And I'm just going to make a bar, essentially. So like a rectangular bar in the footage. And then what we'll do is we'll click onto it, go to the front of the clip. We're going to deselect our position for a second. And now we're going to go make a new keyframe at the top of the clip and down to the bottom of the clip. And now we're just gonna make this bar slide down just slightly, okay? And then if we grab onto our timeline, we zoom out, this is what it did. So it just has like a weird kind of glitchy look to it. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually start applying that to other shots that haven't been selected with the wave warp. Okay, so now we've applied all of these effects, now let's add in a color grade. Now you can keep applying these and adding more and more and more, but this is where we're gonna stick it off here. Now, for a color effect, we're gonna go and select curve, so RGB curve. So let's grab it in and drag it and drop. Now essentially, all you really wanna do is give your shot a certain color look. So for me, I want it to look dark and ominous, so I'm gonna drag down these midtones right down, right, right down. And so we have this really dark and gritty look. And I'm gonna pull out some more greens, make it just look even greenier, and add just a tiny, tiny bit of blue into this look like that. I'm digging that, I'm digging that a lot. I might wanna make it just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go in, and just drag down those midtones just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna copy that, so Control C, and I'm going to apply that to all of my footage. And paste it. All of these shots have this weird look. And now, finally, what I'm going to do is add in a CinemaScope crop line. Now this, there's different ways you can do it. You can go into your sequence settings and change it around. I'm gonna show you a quick and dirty way to do this. Essentially, you're gonna add in a CinemaScope crop line. I'll have the link to one in the description below. And what you wanna do is grab it. You're gonna scale it down so it fits your footage over the top. So let's grab here and let's make it fit like so, so at 68. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's on its side. And we're gonna scale it up. And we're just going to have now black bars on either side and it's going to give it a four, three, aspect ratio that looks pretty creepy. Thank you so much for watching. You guys can take a look at all the other episodes in the description below. I do a bunch of other tutorials. Uh, you can follow me on the interwebs, on Facebook, and goodbye.